The human brain is regularly exposed to mental stimulation, constantly adapting and rewiring through the growth of new neurons. While the brain has two identical looking cerebral hemispheres, there are quite a few asymmetries with the functions of each hemisphere. It's often been said that many people are dominant with one side of their brain, and that determines everything about them. For instance, someone with a dominant right side brain tends to be more creative and spontaneous, while people with a dominant left side of the brain tend to be more logical and analytical. One important thing to remember is that the brain often works like a muscle in that it keeps getting better the more you work on it. So while you may think that you are either more creative or organizational, it's entirely possible for someone with a more dominant side of the brain to develop the other side in order to achieve a greater balance. Now, everyone obviously uses both sides of their brain all the time. Processing information is an example of where the right side of the brain remembers the gist of an experience or the big picture, and the left side of the brain recalls all the details. The brain does work best when both sides are activated and involved in learning and activities. And when both sides of the brain are engaged, stronger neural connections are made, which allows them to operate at a higher level. In fact, there have been plenty of studies that have even talked about this as well. So I wanted to try this out for myself and see if I could do a few things to activate both sides of my brain. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the steps that I'm taking. If you'd like to follow along, maybe you could even try these out for yourself too. The first way I'm doing this is by taking the Stroop test. The Stroop test is a cognitive test named after psychologist John Ridley Stroop. The test is used to measure cognitive flexibility and processing speed by presenting the names of a variety of colors and mismatching them with the color that they are printed on. Now, instead of reading the words that are written, you state the color. Your right brain sees the color, but your left brain must engage to remember not to read the word. This theory, also called relative speed of processing theory, suggests that there is a lag in the brain's ability to recognize the color of a word, since the brain reads words faster than it recognizes colors. The second way is by attempting to use my non-dominant hand for daily tasks. This is one that is really easy to do and can be done throughout the day. For instance, as a right-handed person, I'm brushing my teeth or doing the dishes with my left hand. You could even go about your own bathroom business with your non-dominant hand, but that's just a suggestion and you don't have to take it. I found that the non-dominant hand is actually linked to the non-dominant hemisphere of your brain. Since most of us constantly use our dominant hand, we're only activating one hemisphere of our brain for those tasks. But when you use your non-dominant hand, both hemispheres are activated, which may result in thinking differently and becoming more creative over time. The third way that I'm doing this is by juggling. The reason why something like juggling is great to activate both sides of your brain is because visualization is a right brain function, while physically completing the cycle with both your hands is more of a left brain function. Generally, anything that requires a good amount of eye-hand coordination is quite effective at training you to utilize the non-dominant side of your brain. Not gonna lie though, I'm struggling with this one, but I'll get there eventually and I'll let you know. Finally, if you wanna have a little more fun with this, there are plenty of apps or games that can force both hemispheres of your brain to activate. One of my favorites is an app called Left vs. Right, which has a few different games for mental awareness, precision, and adaptability. One method that I'm planning on integrating more into my life is the use of mind maps. Now, if you don't know what a mind map is, don't worry because I didn't either until fairly recently, but a mind map is essentially a visual representation of the components of any project in your life. It's generally based around a single concept like planning your next vacation or working on different levels of one subject. If you'd like me to talk more about what goes into creating an effective mind map, leave me a yes in the comments below and I might just make a video on that pretty soon. Ultimately, creating a mind map stimulates the creative brainstorming and visual strength of the right brain. But words must be inserted into the map and then they must be organized into categories, which is a left brain activity. Look, developing both sides of your brain is simply a way of making yourself more adept at skills or abilities that you may not have developed or explored in some time, if ever. These are just a few steps that I'm taking to allow myself to increase my own productivity, general output, and ability to enter a state of flow with anything that I'm working on. And I hope that this video gives you a few ideas of ways that you might be able to do the same as well. If it did, don't be afraid to smash your now fully formed brain onto that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more from me every single week. Thanks again for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.